Hello, this is Jeffrey Schwartz. Uh, welcome to the part three of the what to do when the system is slow. And this session will cover how to monitor the system on the fly. Um, so in previous sessions, we discussed how to use PerfMon to do more in-depth analyses. And we started the discussion of the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And we began the discussion of the dynamic management views and functions. Uh, t today's session will be recorded as the others were, and today's session is going to talk about how to use the DMVs in real time to get some information. The example we're going to discuss today is specifically related to file statistics, but you can use other DMVs in exactly the same way. Uh, in this particular one, we're going to look at a system that has some I.O. issues uh, during the collection. The virtual file stats DMF. It's a dynamic management function. It returns data for log files and data files in the database from SQL Server, an internal view of the, the of what is happening inside the database or databases. And it's ideal for determining all kinds of things, like the most active files, uh, where the things were waiting, who did the most work, uh, read-write ratios, average I.O. sizes, things of that nature. So. The way you call the uh, DMF to get all the information about all databases is shown at the end there on the bottom of the slide. And that will return all the information you need to figure out what's going on as far as weights and things like that. Uh, here are some of the columns that come back. Uh, all IDs, pretty much, and that's very common for any kind of DMV or DMF. The number of reads and writes issued against the file, the number of milliseconds, uh, since the incident started, that's really important. That means that you can sample intermittently and not lose any data. So as you can see, these are all totals, and they're just running totals. And the final one that's pretty interesting is the size of the disk file. So if you uh, start increasing your disk file sizes over time, that's a very handy one to monitor. So the example we're going to discuss today is allowing you to capture at will and script and use some scripts that will allow you to really get a snapshot of the last period, some period of time in the recent past, as well as uh, maybe run to date if you're doing a benchmark or something like that, or even in production. You could look at it for the whole day and then the last you know, few minutes or whatever. So what the SQL does is basically it uh, compares, it, it does sampling whenever you tell it to, not automatic. Uh, you compare the last two samples. You compare the first and last ones as well, and presents both sets of results. So this allows you to to determine exactly what's happened overall and what's happened recently. Um, so that's very helpful. Three temp tables are used. Uh, the first one stores a snapshot of the system reference tables, so that we uh, when we create a sample, we don't have to keep looking up things in the system tables all the time. The second one stores some information about the snapshot itself. And the third one, um, and that has to stay open when you're doing it. Otherwise, you'll throw away the temp tables. And the third one actually does the recording of the information and storing it and presenting it, uh, and doing the computations, the difference operators, and things like that. As I mentioned before, you can use uh, any other tables you want, any other DMVs you want. So you can look at indices, you can look at uh, OS weight, latching, all kinds of different things. You can see what's going on. So script one is the one that actually just records exactly what is out there in the system. So it creates a reference table first, and then it loads all the database files. I'm using the 4HDB even though it's not supported officially. Uh, it's just it was the simplest way, particularly for an example type environment. On the select, there's nothing more than to verify it all got in. Uh, the second one is actually information regarding the snapshot itself. It gives you the, the what instance it is, snapshot ID, and the date and time it was taken. So this allows us to compare and know how long it's been since we did the first sam sample or the adjacent sample or anything in between. The the next table is actually contains the snapshot data. In this case, it's all I.O. related. And you'll see there's a good mapping between the file stats, DMF, and what's in this table. 
I put a clustered index on it because I wanted it to be fast when I do the comparisons and not distort the system, especially if I'm doing lots and lots of samples over a long period of time. So for a whole day's worth of benchmarking or a whole day's, of produ whole day's worth of production. The last part of the script just clears out all the tables for the snapshots. In this case, as you can see, I have some vestiges of some other ones that I use. And you, this also gives you an example of some of the other things that I collect in terms of OS weight, inks usage, ink stop, uh, and things of that nature. So those are all things you can watch on the fly and have it interpreted. The nice thing about this is it does a comparison of the of the adjacent or the first and last samples and translate that into how many minutes it's been, how many, what the averages are, what all kinds of things. So you know exactly without having to translate numbers and guess, well, it's struck, you know, it's file three of database nine, that kind of thing. So you run this, uh, the one you got, you run every time, it runs to, you run it to get a current sample and compare it with previous samples, as I mentioned. So It'll save all the samples in the in tables in the temp, in tempdb, uh, very lightweight uh, because you're only doing it as often as you need it to. Sometimes that'll be every 20 minutes. Sometimes it'll be every minute. Who knows? Sometimes it'll be every four. So you could change this to increase or decrease the number of displayed rows in the reporting section. So again, this is something that identifies all the samples and takes care of everything you need. So here's the query that actually obtains and stores the file stats data. It does some computations to convert the numbers into meaningful numbers for us, um, converts things into milliseconds or different things. Uh, so this is kind of what we're trying to do here. Uh, sometimes we're converting them into uh, percentages, different, all kinds of different calculations are being performed when we try to do this. Uh, so then the next one actually does the reporting. It, is, it grabs the snapshot IDs. It depends on which one we're doing. And then at the end, it actually does a comparison. And you can see the first CTE, and that way it, it, the top two, first ID, very first ID, those are actually obtaining IDs using CTEs. And then it will do the comparison, so those can be dynamic. The first sample is uh, with the last sample. And so what it'll do is it'll actually compare the first one with the second one. So you have first sample, second sample. And then in this one, you can see that it actually does the difference operation between the two. It just compares them. So whatever, however you define first and, and last, that's what will be, will be compared. And you can see here that there are a lot of different things that are involved and uh, in terms of size on disk, percentages, all kinds of things are calculated for you. And it makes it very easy to figure out right away Who's doing the work? Who's doing the worst things now, and versus who is doing the worst things overall? Uh, in case that's a little hard to read, I've zoomed that part so you can see how it's the second sample minus the first sample. That's really all you have to do. 
Um, and so you pretty much, that's, you can compute averages, you can do all kinds of things. So this is again something that you want to do. You have to, you do have to take into account the fact that nothing may have happened and so you don't want to divide by zero. Uh, so what you end up having to do is do a check to see, to make sure that there's nothing non-zero in the denominator and uh, that's all you have to do is the case statement. Um, to the first sample through current, you basically do the same thing. It's just the snapshot ID that comes out of first sample is very first snap instead of snap one. Um, so that, again, is, is very simple. Same kind of thing going on here where it compares the data. Same calculations. This is exactly the same code. And then uh, this is the end of the script, so it will detect if there's not if there's a problem or whatever. And this is the full text of the script and something you can use yourself. So well, I guess my worksheet's not coming up, so I was going to show you the whole thing, but here's uh, some partials here. Uh, there's not much waiting in this case since the last sample. As you can see that the IO stall, IO read, the, you know, milliseconds, things, things are not working very, you know, there's not much work going on. Uh, for the cumulative samples, you can see that uh, tempdb accounted for everything and uh, it was actually spending a lot of time waiting nine or ten minutes for tempdb4, um, tempdev4, uh, five, five minutes for tempdev3, tempdev3, and so on. So, so the user database itself only accounted for 5.3 minutes. Average read times since the last sample were very high. Um, you can see here 152, 100, 70, 50, and so you can see that even though I didn't do the most of the work, it did a lot of the waiting, particularly since the last sample. So basically, the read times are good. The write times are reasonable, except for temp, temp dev 4. Uh, for WinPerf, it's the data SQL. The read times are mediocre. The write times were excellent. So that shows you that the write caching is working well, but that the reads can't, the drive can't keep up with the reads. In conclusion, uh, Real-time monitoring using simple scripts enables an analyst to really determine what's going on, both short-term, immediate-term, and longer-term. And uh, the scripts can be enhanced to gather additional information, uh, such as uh, SQL Server waste statistics, index usage statistics, and operational uh, usage is basically from a queries perspective. The operational is from the work inside of the SQL Server indices themselves. Um, please attend session number four, which will discuss how to use index DMS to determine the most active indices, the least active, uh, how they're used, whether it's sequentially or random. Uh, and please complete the four question evaluation to let us know how we can help you and also what topics you would like us to cover in future webinars. So that's it, and I would uh, I appreciate your attending. Thank you very much.